Hello, I'm Luke from Small Fish, and today I'm going to cover particles. So, in this video, I'll explain what are particles, what are particle systems, what is the window when we're creating particles, what are we looking at, what is everything in this, I don't understand. So, I'm going to cover that. I recommend please to watch this video just because I'm going to explain what you're looking at, everything that's going on, each stage of the particle system, and hopefully it'll, you'll be able to understand what the hell you're looking at. When you break open other particles, you can be able to look at them and see each stage and be like, ah, I understand what's going on now. So to get started, you can create a default particle, new asset, particles. I've got my one here as test. So here's your particle. And this is a particle system technically, so particle system is where all particles are contained to create an effect. So if you have a fire particle system, there will be a bunch of particles that all together create a fire effect. And that's basically all that. It also contains everything needed like control points, which can affect the particles as a whole and so on. So that is the particle system. It basically contains everything needed for the effect and all the particles that create that effect. So that way you can delete the entire system and it deletes all the particles as well. And then obviously each particle, to dumb it down, make it as simple as possible. And they're just points in 3D space with velocity, which is a direction of movement, and then properties added on top that define the particles, color, size, and all that. It is a simple explanation, that's a particle. It's just an individual point, and the particle system is the entire thing that creates the effects and that contains it. Now let's look at this window. So you have your simulated. So simulated is when the actual particle system is running in real time, it's being simulated. And that's like 60 times a second, 30 times a second, whatever your simulation time scalers. Next, this is where all the things needed to define and create and mess with the actual particles, all the uh, functions for how to control the particles in your system and create them. And then the, the window to the left of it are like the default, well, not default, all the properties with each function in the particle system this is where you can modify them. And then if we jump over to the right, we have basically just a list of everything you control externally. So usually it'll be control points or named vectors and uh, and floats and stuff so control points are literally just vectors and we can basically set control point zero and we can set that to be a position and that changes this for example um i'll do it in this one because it'll, it'll be able to see it a lot easier so we can do a named flow and that'll be min distance so this makes it easier to control from code so we can now set a min distance instead of control point zero we can, we can do this and min distance 50 and these are basically just all your things you can set in code which is pretty nice uh, to be able to do that before we couldn't and that's that, that this is literally stuff from code that you can mess with so externally being able to mess with stuff in the system uh, most of the time i don't bother touching this uh, unless i want to like physically mess with like what would happen if i mess with stuff in code now let's jump and actually explain each individual uh, section of what their properties, what their functions do. So to go from the top, edit base properties, the base property settings of your particle system. So the maximum possible amount of particles. So the currently active particles can never be more than X amount. So that's like a max cap that's possible. Snapshots, you're able to convert models, which are like set 3D points into a snapshot. So I can create a tree model with our leaves and I'll turn that into a snapshot and then snapshot is a bunch of control points so I can create particles at each individual control point and boom I've got a particle that's shaped exactly like that tree model and that's what a snapshot is it's just like a technically it's a chain of control points so I can create a spiraling effect all the way around that model uh, but yeah this is just all your default settings for your particle system and that's these are I'll just always uh, set for anything else just default settings now we'll actually begin to get into what happens while your particle system is being simulated so pre-emission operators these happen before a particle is created or even before anything is beginning to happen but usually it's before a particle is created so these usually for the most part are all to deal with control points so you can mess with control points before anything's created or simulation time scale and stuff like that basically that just, just deals with setting the simulation to be twice the speed as you can see or if you want to be crazy that's too cheeky too cheeky you shouldn't do that the world will explode uh, but i'll leave it at one and that's what pre-mission operators are that it basically allows you to change some stuff before any uh, particles are created and emitters this is where we actually create our particles so we can say create 100 particles uh, 
every uh, second. Or we can say instantaneously create 100 particles and nothing more. Instant 100 particles and it's done. Or we can create 10 particles a second and once we hit 100 don't make any more unless some particles get deleted and then just create more until we hit 100 again. It will always keep it at 100. And that's what they are, they just literally create your particles. Next, initializers. I like to think of initializers as your default properties each individual particles given when they're created. So this will be like its default size, colour, lifespan, position, um, velocity and all that sort of stuff. All these default settings each individual particle has when they're created. And you can have it so it's like the size is randomly between two points or its position is a random point within like an imaginary sphere and all these sort of things. As soon as it's created we give them all these uh, properties but we need to be able to take advantage of these properties we need to be able to like let's say uh, change them or we need to be able to use them for stuff and so on in order to do that especially for the uh, movement we'll go on to operators so if these are created these are the properties given to the particles when they're created operators are where actually changing the values of the properties while it's being simulated so like we can actually take that lifespan duration and we can slowly fade the particles out over time or we can take the actual position and movement and we can actually begin to like move it every tick a simulation tick or second or and we can also add like drag onto it so it slows down over time and we can add gravity so it slowly moves down over time but that's very basic it's basically just taking them default properties and messing with them so these kind of like paired together that's when it's created and that's after it's created next these two are also I like to imagine as pairs. So force generators. Obviously we've got basic movement here, but let's say we want to add like some exotic movement onto it. So we can add forces like um these are adding movement. These these are not setting, these are adding movement. You'll understand why I'm saying that in a second, but so we can add movement to push it towards a control point or spin it around a control point or add random noise to like move it around noisily or turbulent force and stuff like that. These, these just add random movement onto each individual particle. Next are constraints. So if these are adding movement, and these are like constraining the movement basically. So like making the particle collide with the world and stick to them and stop or bounce off the world or saying that the um, the movement of the particle cannot go any further from like 50 away from a certain control point or it cannot go outside an imaginary cube these constrain the movement to like certain places so that's why i like to pair them that adds movement and that stops or constrains the movement these set properties these changed properties and then currently with all these if we had all these these are just imaginary points with like a bunch of properties and movement going on we don't actually see anything so we need to add a renderer and that will either be a render sprite render rope which takes in like two control points to go between render blobs and all these other types of renderers and what this will do is we can set our default uh, settings for our renderer and then any other properties set in initializers or change in operators will be applied to our renderers for like let's say the, the size which will be radius or the color or the rotation which will be roll all these things uh, here or change in the operators will then be applied to the renderers and change how they look and then lastly children so let's say I had an explosion particle and that particle has multiple effects within that main effect it has the actual explosion itself it has shrapnel flying out it has dust being kicked up and they're all they're going to be all each their individual own uh, particle system uh, but we want them all to play at the same time so we can create all them individual ones and then we can add the extra ones into the main explosion particle like so when we create a um this particle these are all simulated and created at the exact same time in game and they also all share the same control points which is is very useful in some cases because you very much want to be able to have like a control point shared between multiple effects that are all meant to be the same one and now we can easily edit each individual child effect uh, and that way we don't have like an entire mess uh, now quickly to cover over again default settings of your particle system operators basically settings uh, to add before any particles emitted how we're actually creating the particles like how many we're creating default properties of your particles changing the properties of your particles during a simulation adding movement onto your particles during a simulation constraining your particles uh, position or movement during a simulation 
power actually we're visibly seeing the particles and this takes in the properties from before and any other children to also play inside the simulation in uh, inside this particle system in game and that is the particle system in sandbox um, hopefully that gives you a much better understanding of each stage within the particle system um, and what's going on inside now it's pretty easy pretty simple at the end of the day hopefully that helps you